Hello everybody, we're back again with another matchup of the Cuban Assassin on his special DVD collection. As you see the Cuban Assassin coming to the ring right now, having words to the camera. This match is scheduled for one fall, puts the Cuban Assassin squaring off against the other half of Death and Destruction, Frank the Tank Parker. The official of this match is going to be none other than Eric Foster. And this match takes place in APW Appalachia Pro Wrestling at the Bradley Prosperity Volunteer Fire Department in Bradley, West Virginia. As you can see, there's a bit more attendance as it grows from the last match we had with uh, Ruthless Roger Anderson. Now we got Frank the Tank Parker, his tag team partner, going against the Cuban Assassins. We wait for Frank the Tank Parker to come out now into this matchup. See, APW Appalachia Pro Wrestling kind of replace something that was gone for a long time from in southern West Virginia which was WAY TV4 Saturday Night Wrestling hosted by Shuri Love which was a local uh, wrestling promotion that lasted it was a it wasn't even a syndicated program it was a wrestling program on WAY TV4 that lasted Lord from uh, 1954 all the way up until 1977 when the TV studios burnt down as you see Frank the Tank Parker is now in the ring one half of the tag team Death and Destruction. His tag team partner is Ruthless, Ruthless Roger Anderson. And we've seen the Cuban Assassin have a match with him earlier. And the official of the match, Eric Foster, started the ring of this bell here. And this match is official. As you see there's more fans as they started growing for APW, Appalachia Pro Wrestling, because it was, became a new phenomena like WYT before Saturday Night Wrestling. It was the replacement for it. And it started the Bradley... Prosperity Volunteer Fire Department in Bradley, West Virginia, and then it would relocate to the Oak Hill Army National Guard in Oak Hill, West Virginia. Uh, official Eric Foster trying to check to see if there's a, a foreign object on the Cuban assassin here before he gets this match underway. And Frank the Tank Parker is wanting to get some retribution after that cheat win the Cuban assassin and Brian Douglas had onto his tag team partner, Ruthless Roger Anderson. Now, Cuban Assassin having words with the fans here at the Bradley Pro Prosperity Volunteer Fire Department in Bradley, West Virginia. <laughs> and he's seeing Chief Black Eagle sitting in attendance, who was a Saturday Night Wrestling favorite, who has now uh, passed away for some years. Uh, Chief Black Eagle passed away in May of 2005. But he was a legendary wrestler at Saturday Night Wrestling, WYTV4, and that's what the Cuban Assassin make it fun. Uh, Chief Blackie will always come to local wrestling matches and he always came to APW, Appalachia Pro Wrestling. And right now we're seeing the Cuban Assassin here stalling for time, it looks like, before he even hooks up with one Frank the Tank Parker. Just taunting the fans here, and that's what the Cuban Assassin is doing, what he does best. Colorbo top now. Oh, and. Uh, Frank the Tank Parker shows the uh, strength advantage early on in this matchup. Cuban goes for the ropes. Big shoulder tackle. Gets knocked down by Frank the Tank Parker here in the ring. Hits the ropes again. Oh, Frank the, talk, Frank the Tank Parker just picked him up over his head and dropped him. And now it gives a big stomp. Goes to cover one, two, and a kick out. And the Cuban Assassin rolls outside the ring. Uh, Frank the Tank Parker pretty strong. And the Cuban Assassin getting ready to walk out the door. As he does so, he walks outside like he did with Rufus Roger Anderson. And now he comes back in. Of course, this time not freezing from the winter cold. He grabs a chair from a fan, <laughs> just takes a chair and throws it inside the ring. And official Eric Foster gets it. And then all of a sudden, Frank the Tank Parker grabs a hold of the chair. And the Cuban Assassin now, look at that. Frank the Tank Parker is now taunting the Cuban Assassin as he sits down in the chair inside of the ring. Cuban Assassin. Uh, is it like I said, Cuban Assassin just came back from the Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling's 1999 Legends Tour. Came to West Virginia to uh, uh, he did the, the 99 Legends Tour and then went over to Can Am Wrestling Federation. Came back in November of 1999 to West Virginia to APW Appalachia Pro Wrestling. Started out, and I do believe this uh, kind of uh, still is in the month of November or December. Excuse me. Side headlock applied by Frank the Tank Parker onto the Cuban Assassin. Cuban Assassin trying to grab some hair that's not on top, no, right now on uh, Frank the Tank Parker. 
Bring the tank Parker. And right now Cuban is going to a top wrist lock here. Goes out of the side hill up to a top wrist lock. And the power of Frank the tank Parker just takes the Cuban assassin down to the mat. And now the Cuban assassin gets the official Eric Foster and complains about the hair pulling. When there was no hair pulling, that's what he's saying happened. But Frank the tank Parker is uh, still wrestling. Uh, he is currently the Southern States Wrestling Heavyweight Champion in Southern States Wrestling from over in Kingsport, uh, Tennessee. A lot of uh, good wrestlers down there, such as uh, Handsome Bo James, uh, Misty James. A lot of great wrestlers down there. Collar with top, side hook applied by Frank the Tank Parker onto the Cuban Assassin as he's grinding that. Cuban Assassin trying to get out of that side hook, goes back to a top wrist lock again. Trying to, and Frank Parker still, Frank the Tank shows him the strength, goes into arm drag, takedown right there. Big hip toss onto the Cuban Assassin by Frank the Tank Parker. Big old press slam over top of his head and drops the Cuban again onto the mat and then goes for a cover. One, two, and a kick out by the Cuban Assassin. And now he's trying to get out as Frank the Tank Parker try to get him and keep him in the ring. Cuban Assassin. Oh, he doesn't want any part of this Frank the Tank Parker. Not, not at all. Now the Cuban Assassin himself would wrestle big legendary names uh, such as Demolition Axe, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, um, the Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, the Rock and Roll Express. He would wrestle one half of uh, uh, the, the Rockers, which was Shawn Michaels, Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels' tag team partner, Marty Jannetty. Wrestled the Patriot. Wrestled Wildfire Tommy Rich, who was Wildfire Tommy Rich, was a former NWA World's Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. Uh, he would wrestle with uh, Rene Dupree, which is, you know, Cuban Assassin has been credited for the guy who basically polished or trained Rene Dupree. And Rene, Rene Dupree became a WWE wrestling superstar, the youngest tag team champion in uh, both the world tag team and WWE tag team still to this date in professional wrestling history. Now the Cuban Assassin is back in the ring wanting to do a test of strength on Frank the Tank Parker here at the uh, Bradley Prosperity Volunteer Fire Department in Bradley, West Virginia for this APW, Appalachia Pro Wrestling matchup. Now the Cuban Assassin shown that he may have a body to be able to show off and, and flex, but this is a side note. The Cuban Assassin himself was a former bodybuilder. Uh, he was a bodybuilder when he was in, in high school uh, and shortly on and early on of his professional wrestling career. Uh, Frank Tank Parker switches hand here. Switching hands on the Cuban Assassin, and now the Cuban Assassin getting a little irritated by it, complaining to official Eric Foster. Eric Foster says he has nothing to do with that. Trying to go for the test of strength again with uh, Frank the Tank Parker. But the Cuban Assassin also, a lot of people don't know this, he is a, <laughs> and Frank the Tank Parker puts his hand high, and now the Cuban Assassin, you know, showing that, that the Cuban Assassin is not as tall as Frank the Tank Parker or many guys in the ring, but has a good size to him. Like I said, Cuban Assassin, a former bodybuilder, who was also a two-time arm wrestling champion. A lot of people don't know that. He won two arm wrestling tournaments. Two-time arm wrestling champion. Uh, Colorado Top, and now Frank the Tank Parker gets out of it and turns it into a full Nelson lock. The Cuban Assassin gives him a low blow. The official Eric Foster didn't see that. And now Cuban Assassin gives a forearm to the back of Frank the Tank Parker. He butts the back of Frank the Tank Parker. Picking up that body part, working him over here now into the corner. Takes Frank the Tank Parker, scoops him up, big body slam on the Frank the Tank Parker by the Cuban Assassin. Comes off the ropes, corkscrew elbow drop onto Frank the Tank Parker, goes for a cover, one, two, only a count of two as Frank the Tank Parker kicks out. Nice guy, reverse chin lock applied. On to Frank the Tank Parker by the Cuban Assassin. See, a lot of people don't know the Cuban Assassin is a very strong guy. He, he doesn't have the physique that he had in the beginning of his professional wrestling career. Uh, but he was a bodybuilder. I mean, you can go on to his Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com backslash Richie.acevito. And, uh, and you can see that picture. Right now, ducks and uh, clothesline, ducks and elbow, and gets a knee to the midsection on Frank the Tank Parker by the Cuban Assassin. Now he's stomping on to uh, Frank the Tank Parker here in the center of the ring, trying to work that back over. But uh, you can check pictures on his Facebook site and see some pictures of him when he was in his bodybuilding days in the, er in, in the early on of his professional wrestling career. 
He's also got a MySpace page, which is www.myspace.com backslash Cuban Assassin 2, the actual number 2. Check out their sites, uh, check these photos, bio information. You can get the other information uh, where he's actually uh, wrestling at now these days. Right now, the fans here at the Bradley Prospect Volunteer Fire Department getting around it behind Frank the Tank Parker as he tried to get out of that stretch to hold that uh, Cuban hand, Cuban reversed on him and just going right back to that back. See how smart the Cuban assassin is? A lot of people may talk about his, 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 dir his dirtiness, his dastardly dirtiness deeds and being such a, 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 a bad guy and using illegal foreign objects and everything as he's working over that injured back of Frank the Tank Parker and now Frank the Tank Parker gets the fist into the Cuban assassin and right back to that bear hug again working that back going to Frank the Tank Parker showing that he is a strong guy. There's no doubt about the Cuban assassin is not a strong guy. He is. He, he, he has, like I said, he was a bodybuilder for years. Now Frank Tank Parker throws another closed fist to the face of the Cuban assassin and right back again to that bear hug, working over that lower back region that the Cuban assassin has been working on, on Frank the Tank Parker, which is the tag team partner of ruthless Roger Anderson from Death and Destruction. Oh, and he gives him a slap to the ears here. The Cuban assassin has some ringing going on in his head now, as you can see in the corner. Frank the Tank Parker comes over, gives a boot to the midsection of the Cuban Assassin. Just giving us a couple more boots there. On to Cuban Assassin. Close fist to the, the head of the Cuban Assassin by Frank the Tank Parker. Irish rip out of the corner, reverser. Oh, I'm right back on that back again as you see the Cuban Assassin being smart about that. Slowly taking his time, coming over to Ruth, um, excuse me, Frank the Tank Parker, trying to choke him. The official Eric Foster stopping, turns him around, forearm to the back. Cuban Assassin really working on that lower back region of Frank the Tank Parker. Picks him up again, scoop body slam again into the center of the ring by the Cuban Assassin onto Frank the Tank Parker. And then it comes over to a sit down abominable stretch applied by the Cuban Assassin onto Frank the Tank Parker. And now the Cuban Assassin with the official Eric Foster's not looking, grabbing the ropes, applying that sit down abominable stretch. Eric Foster did not see. He sees the ropes shaking, asking him if he's using the ropes. The Cuban assassin saying no. The fans here at the Bradley Prosperity Fire Department saying otherwise, and there he goes again using that rope again. Eric Foster sees the rope moving, but he didn't see him have his hand on the rope. To me, it almost looked like he did. And the Cuban assassin using that middle rope again. This time, the official Eric Foster catches him, and now he has to let go of the hold, or he'll. He'll be, he has a count of five that go to the hole or he'll be disqualified. And he's working over that back again. Uh, Frank the Tank Parker getting on to him. Gets him up here. He's going to go for a suplex. It's blocked by Frank Parker going again. Blocked again. Frank Parker picks him up. Gets him into a suplex of his own onto the Cuban Assassin to the center of the ring in this APW, Appalachia Pro Wrestling, flashback matchup between the Cuban Assassin and Frank the Tank Parker. Highlighting the career of the Cuban assassin, some of his matches, and some of the promotions and territories he's been. The Cuban assassin picks up Frank the Tank Parker, going for another scoop body slam again, a third time, and this time he's saying it's over. What's the Cuban assassin going to do now? He steps over through the ropes. He's climbing. Looks like yeah, he's climbing to the top. The Cuban assassin comes over for a leg drop and Frank the Tank Parker moves out of the way and Cuban Assassin just lands his rump onto the ring as you can see he's feeling the effects of that. Throws a punch, is blocked. Frank Parker getting all over the Cuban Assassin. He's on the ropes, you see how dazed he is. Irish rip off the ropes, big clothesline by Frank the Tank Parker onto the Cuban Assassin. Slowly crawls over to go for cover one, two, only a count of two as the Cuban Assassin kicks out right there. Frank the Tank Parker gets up, blocks Cuban's punch. Getting on to Cuban again. You can see he's almost out. Irish rip off the ropes. Big high body drop onto the Cuban assassin as he's laying there in the mat. I think he's almost out right there. Cuban assassin gasping for air right there. Frank Parker comes over, covers one, two, and only count of twos. The Cuban assassin kicks out again. Slowly getting to their feet. Cuban goes for a punch. It's blocked again. And Frank Parker gets on the Cuban assassin again. Irish rip off the ropes. Big, huge power slam. 
and Frank Parker couldn't hold him for that power slam. It took a lot of that back region. Goes over to hook the leg, one, two, and the Cuban assassin kicks out. As you see, Frank the Tank Parker's back is giving him problems. His knee's giving him problems. The Cuban assassin is over in the corner. Frank the Tank Parker definitely hurt his knee. And that uh, power slam onto the Cuban assassin, getting on to the Cuban assassin in the corner. Irish rip off the corner into the next corner. Frank Parker slowly getting up, comes charging in. Oh, he runs into the official Eric Foster as the Cuban assassin pull Eric Foster into the corner with him. Cuban assassin pulls out his flag. He ducks the flag, gives the boot to Cuban assassin, gets the flag. Out comes Brian Douglas. He hits the Cuban with the flag. Brian Douglas, he doesn't see Brian Douglas, and Brian Douglas hits him with the Canadian flag. Comes over, rolls the Cuban assassin over, covers Frank the Tank Parker, official Eric Foster is starting to come to. One, two, three, and there you go, and your winner of the match is the Cuban assassin, thanks to the aid again of the Canadian, Brian Douglas. Fans, don't go away. Another great match of the Cuban assassin coming up.